arrived in Manila September 29th, 1972. And we did language school down in Mindanao. And then I was in the parish from June 10th until July 27th. That was the day I got shot. I decided, well, I'll go along. It was kind of like exciting. <laughs> Little did I know that it wasn't exciting. It was going to be tragic. While we were there, Father Patty Reedy arrived. He was the local superior, and he arrived uh, in his pickup truck. So we decided we would take a lot of the patients in our truck and other people who wanted to evacuate. We took off from Tukuran and we're going out toward back up to Aurora, which is where I lived. And uh, <clears throat> all of a sudden, the uh, the rebels opened up on us. Gunfire, M16s, AK-47s, everything that they had. All the glass in the truck was blown out. Every bit of it, all the lights, everything was shot out. I was the one that was hit. Uh, and thank God I was because the trajectory of the bullet was such that if it hadn't hit me, it would have hit him in the head and we would have then all been wiped out. It was just a miracle that we were able to drive through it. Father Reedy just put his foot to the floor and kept going and we went about another four or five kilometers before he felt safe enough to stop and see with everybody alive in the back. And uh, he saw that I was hit and he said, we gotta get going, so we took off and we got to Aurora and they, they uh, tried to save my life, do as much as they can there. Uh, they used an x-ray machine that was older than I was. It was a, a World War II x-ray machine. This was in 1973. And they decided then that they, uh, they couldn't uh, do anything for me there except clean up the wound because it left a wound as big as a coffee mug and my side over here just missed the spine by, oh, thank God, by an eighth of an inch. If I'd have been up higher an eighth of an inch, I'd be dead, or at least paralyzed for the rest of my life. They put me in a hospital. I don't remember how long I was in that hospital, whether it was one night or two or four. They put me on a boat for the 10-hour boat ride, and at that time, we didn't have any cabins or anything on the boats. So I was on the deck on a cot with 800 people with their little hand fans, you know, trying to do something to help the poor priest who was shot. And uh, we just made the trip over there. I was met by a real ambulance in, in uh, Cebu City, where I was operated on. And uh, although they saved my life, I died once while I was on the table. The peace is un unspeakable. The, uh, the light, the light isn't like these lights that are here now. They're, they can get very hot. You know, it, it's like, it felt to me like that was God's love drawing me in. Uh, just no urge to come back to earth. Uh, a lot of people say they, they, they had an experience of meeting others on the way. I didn't have that. I, all I had was the, the beautiful vision. I, I, I'd say it's a beatific vision of God in, in its essence. Uh, pure divinity, pure hope pure love. You don't need hope because you're there, but it's the sense of, of no longing anymore. You're there, you know, and, and it's certainly, it's, it's really unspeakable. I couldn't put it, no matter how many hours I talked, I, I could never put it into words. It was a wonderful experience, actually. It, it sounds terrible, and it was. I mean, the invasiveness of all that that went on. It's just a terrible thing to do to a person, but, uh, you know, it really opened my eyes to the suffering of the people in a way that I'm sure n I never would have felt the same without going through that hopelessness and that helplessness. Uh, so that, w that was, uh, I think, part of the Lord's plan for my preparation for the missionary career that I would face. So when I was later assigned as social action director, I, I really had a, you know, strong feelings for the poor and, and, and their situation under the Marcos regime and being caught between the army and the rebels and the, and the Muslims and sometimes all three. And, and uh, you know, it just changed my whole 
feeling for that. I was very much one with them. And I, I got to learn the language very well, uh, thanks be to God. And that allowed me to do things that, that maybe others couldn't do and to be more one with the people and, than others could be. And I always felt that was a real blessing, both you know, the, the ambush, the being shot, and, and uh, being able to, to speak the language so well. Uh, they were all blessings that, that uh, God sent to me and that have really made my, my ministry a fulfilling and life-giving thing for myself. I, I always say to people that ask, uh, if I hadn't gone to the Philippines, I never would have known God. I certainly wouldn't have known God in the way that I know God now. And so I, I, I await the day when, when my mission is done and, uh, and God will call me home.